Hello, my name is Douglas Block. Welcome to the Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. Today is Flashback Friday, a feature in which I republish one of my earlier videos you might not have seen that contains really important coping strategies that will help you attain a better mood. Now, here's today's video. The title of today's um, video is called, Does Depression Cause Permanent Brain Damage? Before we go into that, of course, we have to start with our humor. And, you know, today is, uh, I think it's the 12th. Hey, there's a lunar, it's a solar eclipse today. Wow. Anyway, it's also the fifth day of the Tour de France. And uh, for those of you who follow it, uh, uh, Britain, British guy, Chris Froome, has won three uh, years in a row. But this year, he's getting challenged by a competitor who happened to be bipolar. And the reason he's going to give Chris a run for his money is because he's a rapid cycler. All right. Time for the, time for the, uh, time for the, whatever, whatever we're doing. Yes, the talk. The other day I was uh, coaching one of my long distance clients. He actually is overseas and he'd been struggling uh, for depression, from depression for about a year. And that's an awfully long time. So naturally he was quite discouraged. And at one point he said to me, you know, I'm afraid I have permanent brain damage. I said, what makes you say that? He says, well, you know, I haven't been able to think or focus or concentrate for so long. I think my brain is permanently damaged. I thought for a moment and said, well, have you ever had a really bad cold? He said, yeah, I, I certainly had my share of them. I said, what was that like? He said, well, I, I, you know, I couldn't uh, breathe. I was stuffed up. I would sneeze. Sometimes I'd get a fever and chill. I had to, you know, lie in bed, drink chicken noodle soup, whatever. I said, well, did you ever wonder if your body was permanently damaged by that, by that cold, by that illness? Did you ever say to yourself, I have permanent respiratory damage? He said, no. I've had these things before. Within a couple of days or even weeks, I'm, you know, out of it and back to my old self. Well, I said, well, why don't you think of depression as an illness, just like having a cold or a strep throat? Depression is an illness of the brain. The cold is an illness of the respiratory system or the strep throat's, strep throat's an infection. But otherwise, there's no difference. They're both illnesses and you can recover from each of them. Of course, the similarity between a sick brain and an acute illness is not so easy to see. We all know that the latter uh, lasts only a short time. Uh, you know, the immune system kind of takes care of things most of the time. You don't have to do a lot. Just sit back, chill out, have some warm chicken soup, and eventually it goes away. Uh, one of my uh, group members recently had a really bad strep throat. I remember he was texting people, oh my God, I'm vomiting, and I ache all over, and I'm, I have this headache, and I can hardly swallow. It sounded pretty bad. He came back uh, to the... Um, the group and I said, yeah, well, how was it? Were you bummed out? He said, oh, no, no, I, I had a lot of YouTube videos and I had a lot of uh, podcasts I wanted to catch up on, so it wasn't so bad. I said, you weren't suicidal? He said, why should I be? I knew it was going to be over in maybe two or three weeks max, so I just took the time to, you know, go ahead and focus on some things I wanted to watch. As my uh, group member told me, he knew that pretty soon he'd be up and at him, so it wasn't that big a deal. But with depression, with a depressive illness, there is no end in sight. And here's the important thing. The mental pain of depression is exponentially more painful than the symptoms of a flu. I'll never forget when I was in my depressive episode, I read something by the great novelist William Styron right before he went into the psych ward. He said, I would rather have my arm cut off without anesthesia than going through the pain that I'm going through right now. That's how bad it was. So it is true. The pain is immense. It is true that it doesn't seem like there's an insight, but the same principle applies if the body can heal, the brain can heal. Now, many people ask me, how can you be so sure of this? Well, I'll tell you how. Three ways. One is I've been in the depressive episode really bad. Not once, not twice, not three, four times. And I write about this in my book, When Going Through Hell, Don't Stop. Remember, through hell. And I've come out of it. Uh, my cognitive function's completely restored. I was able to write again. I've seen a number of group members in 17 years. I've seen so many people have breakdowns, hospitalized, even suicide attempts, and now they're leading joyful lives. And thirdly, I've read a number of really good memoirs uh, about this, like Darkness Visible by uh, William Styron. And one of my more recent favorites is called Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig. And um, I'd like to sh show you how it begins. So the introduction is titled, This Book is Impossible. Thirteen years ago, I knew this couldn't happen. I was going to die, you see, or go mad. There was no way I would still be here. 
Sometimes I doubted I would even make the next 10 minutes. And the idea that I would be well enough and confident enough to write about it in this way would have been just far too much to believe. Well, he did write the book and it became a bestseller and, uh, and he recovered his cognitive faculties. Just like I did when I wrote the book, When Going Through Hell Don't Stop. People told me I was going to write a memoir. No way, I said. And sure enough, I did. So you see, I told my client, people do recover. Your brain is not damaged. It's just been laid low by the sickness. And if you just let enough time pass, you will heal and the brain will heal also. This has been Douglas Block. I hope you found the information on this Flashback Friday video helpful. If so, please give it a like as likes draw more and more people to this channel and hopefully some more subscribers. Uh, you can also leave your comments in the comments section or email me douglasblock at gmail.com. If you do want to subscribe to this channel, click on my photo in the closing credits. You'll be taken to my subscribe page. And if you click on the bell to the right, you'll be notified every time I do a new video or live chat. And if you want to contribute to this uh, channel and become a patron, simply click on the Patreon image. You'll be taken to my crowdfunding site. And until next video, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much.